Merry Christmas. My gift to you. Kid Pool with lightsabers. Brought to you via Comics Explained. React. So as promised, <laughs> as we continue this road to Deadpool Kills Deadpool, and as we go over these different versions of Deadpool, what we do now is we jump to the story of Kid Pool. Now, while Kidpool has appeared in various comics as part of Deadpool's continuity, what Prelude to the Deadpool Core does is give us the origin story of Kidpool. And so this is the story that we're going to focus on going forward into the Deadpool Kills Deadpool story. So as we get into our story, what we do here is we join Professor Charles Xavier and Storm at the Xavier Orphanage for Troubled Boys. And what Xavier is doing here, as far as we can tell, <laughs> is he's trying on different wigs. And the reason why is because Emma Frost is head of the, uh, I guess, the White Queen School for Girls, and they're going to be hosting a gala, at least Charles Xavier will be hosting a gala, that will involve Emma Frost and her students attending Charles Xavier's school. And what Charles Xavier is trying to do... <laughs> is he's trying to get with Emma Frost, and so he's basically trying to make sure he looks good while it happens. Now, what he tells Storm is that he plans on basically planting a subliminal message in the mind of Emma Frost to basically trick her into believing that he's very attractive and that he's always looked as good as he does in order to basically hide his boldness, which seems to be something he's ashamed of. But what also happens here is that Storm tells Charles Xavier that the new kid just isn't fitting in with everybody else and that it may disrupt the gala they plan on hosting. And so what Charles Xavier says while he's sporting a dashing and incredibly amazing afro wig is he says that Storm needs to find the first opportunity she can to basically put Deadpool in detention. And so what we do here is we pick up with Kidpool while he's in class along with Scott Summers and he's basically just being a nuisance here. He's giving Scott Summers a hard time, he's making fun of him, he's giving him a wedgie and so on and so forth and being just gen generally disruptive. And so what happens is Scott Summers complains to uh, Hank McCoy who's the teacher and Hank McCoy sends both of them to Storm's office. And so once they arrive in Storm's office, what we find is that Scott Summers immediately tells Storm what it is that's been going on, that Kid Pool's been giving him a hard time, and so Storm gives the both of them detention. Now initially, Scott Summers doesn't want to go to detention. In fact, he begs Storm to let him stay out of detention. The reason being because Jean Grey is going to be uh, coming along with Emma Frost as well as the other female students as part of this gala, and Scott Summers says he loves her, and so he wants to be there when Jean Grey arrives, but Storm's not going to hear any of it, and so what she does is simply just, again, and send the both of them to detention. So what we do here is we jump to the danger room. And the danger room is basically the detention location for uh, any of the students who are given detention. And the reason why, as far as it being explained to us, is because with this being the danger room, there's really nowhere they can go. They're really just kind of stuck in here. But then Scott Summers tells Deadpool that he has the access code to get them out of there. And so what happens is initially Scott Summers only wants to use the code in order to make the time pass faster, to basically use the danger room so the two of them can have a little bit of fun here, but really more or less just a way to, uh, I guess again, take away from Deadpool, probably giving him a hard time. And so what happens here, I think in one of the coolest moments in the history of any of the Deadpool comics, is that Kidpool finds what appear to be a couple lightsabers. Now, think about this for a second. Imagine, like, any variation of Deadpool wielding lightsabers. Like, how amazing would that be? <laughs> And this is what happens. Kidpool apparently has a of his own lightsabers. Leg. And so Kidpool and uh, Scott Summers start fighting one another. And for the most part, the lightsabers are knocked out of Kidpool's hands so that he can't cut Scott Summers in half. And the two of them start fighting. But then all of a sudden, Kidpool stops Scott Summers. The reason being because in his mind, he can rationalize that if the two of them are able to leave the danger room because Scott Summers has the code, then they can go back to the ball and they can basically start talking up different women. And so initially, Scott Summers says no. He doesn't want to do this. But Deadpool, or I guess Kidpool, begins to basically change his mind by saying that Wolverine is going to start talking to Jean Grey and that Wolverine may very well steal Jean Grey away from him. And so this manages to sway Scott Summers, and uh, Scott Summers ends up letting the two of them out. And so what we do from here is we join uh, Charles Xavier as he's macking on Emma Frost and doing a pretty good job at it, too, I might add. And it seems as though he's been successful in adding, I guess, uh, implementing this subliminal message in her mind because then she suddenly finds him attractive. And I probably would too, considering that he's wearing this amazing blonde wig that kind of makes him look like a long shot, but he's kind of, he, it looks like he has, has like the bad boy look without the bad boy attitude, I don't really know how to describe that, but he looks pretty awesome. And so what we find is that Wolverine is, is basically talking with uh, Jean Grey and 
Dalton and trying to uh, chat her up. And he's also sort of making fun of Scott Summers. And so we find that Scott Summers and, uh, and Kidpool are watching this whole event take place. And then it's revealed to us that Kidpool is basically going to cause a distraction here. What Kidpool says while he's brandishing both of these lightsabers is that Scott Summers needs to stay put and that Kidpool is going to cause a distraction by getting the attention of everybody else. And so what he does here is he gets up on the table and begins uh, screaming at everybody, begins talking to everybody, and he actually addresses Emma Frost School as the school for girls who keeps their, keep their legs crossed, which is kind of a adult reference here. But nonetheless, the fact is that he begins using his lightsabers to draw attention and make a great big huge scene to kind of poke fun at everybody. And while this is happening, Scott Summers steals Jean Grey away from Wolverine. And so what happens is that the two of them start talking, but we also see that a lot of the other students led by Wolverine begin to join the fray. And so suddenly, as various people begin attacking uh, Deadpool in order to get him off the stage, Deadpool again continues to wreak havoc here. He continues to cause all kinds of problems. But then we find that Scott Summers, who makes his move with uh, Jean Grey and tries to tell her what it is he's thinking, ends up getting friend-zoned. So that sucks for Scott Summers. <laughs> And then we find that Emma Frost, while she's talking with uh, with Charles Xavier, we end up finding that Emma Frost says that she initially intends to uh, basically go through and to, uh, to, I guess, give Charles Xavier a good time, so to speak. But then suddenly, Storm busts in and tells Charles Xavier that Kidpool's wreaking havoc in the ballroom. And so now Charles Xavier has basically been blocked by Kidpool, and now he's in a world of hurt. And so basically, at this point, everybody's mad at Kidpool because he's been screwing everybody over. And so while he's initially back into a corner while he's initially about to be attacked by uh, all these various students. Storm, of course, shows up and says this entire thing needs to come to an end, and then Charles Xavier arrives. And Charles Xavier says that at this point, there's really nothing they can do to help Kid Pool, but because... <laughs> Because they have money from the federal government for a stimulus package, that they have to keep him here. But as far as Charles Xavier is concerned, the most egregious act that Deadpool's committed is he's gotten in the way of Charles Xavier getting with Emma Frost, which, in truth, is a legitimate claim. Like, if Charles Xavier actually had a chance to get with Emma Frost and Kidpool got in the way, I'd probably just lock him in a room and never let him out. But the fact remains that Kidpool is continuing to be made fun of by everybody, everybody's sort of giving him a hard time, and so ultimately he says that if everybody wants him to leave, then he's going to leave, but in, in the end it doesn't really matter because he's going on to bigger and better things. But in truth, he's really just kind of bluffing here. He's really just kind of, uh, I guess, trying to maintain what little dignity he has left. But then suddenly, we find the real Deadpool from Earth 616 shows up and tells everybody that he has to take Kidpool away because Kidpool needs to help him to save the entire multiverse. Basically telling everybody that they suck because they're not as good as Kidpool because they can't save the multiverse, which is awesome. With that being said, that's pretty much the end of this origin story. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it stops. And so what we're going to do is in the next video, I'm not sure who we're going to do. Maybe we'll do Brian Pool, maybe we'll do Lady Deadpool. I don't know. We'll look at the different versions of Deadpool and let me know who you guys want to see in the Lady next video. Deadpool. With that being said, I will catch you guys later. Peace. Be sure to follow me on Twitter. There you can keep up with all the updates from Comics Explained and talk to me directly. <coughs>